Okay, so let's discuss about object oriented programming. So let's start with a normal way of writing code. Suppose you are creating, let's say you are creating a calculator. So uh, this is the example in PSP and you are calculating the area. You write the function for calculating area. If you want to calculate parameter, you write function and you just call the function and then it will calculate it and give us result. So this way of writing code is not scalable. If a project becomes really big, it is quite hard for this kind of code to work on this kind of code. So plus this code doesn't follow any standard like solid principle, which we'll uh, discuss in later on in this series. Also, this got a lot of parameters. Uh, we have to keep adding the conditionals. Suppose we want to add new shape or we want to change the logic for area calculation for rectangle. We need to come here and write all these. It will uh, really become uh, quite unmaintainable as we keep adding new functionalities. Okay, so let's uh, take a look at the better way of writing this. So this is also known as procedural way and let's create the object out of it. So here what I have done is I've created a separate class for rectangle, separate class for circle. So all these will be on separate files and us any individual developer can work on each of this class to extend the functionality to write all the logic related to rectangle. So we can uh, just if we want to change anything, we can just come to this class and uh, fix the issues or any stuff uh, that won't break uh, other code. So in this case, if we change something, it is still chance of breaking the code for calculation of area for other shapes and yeah so this is the basic example of uh, object oriented programming where it is useful so i uh, hope you get some idea out of it we have created the shape class where all default code will be we'll discuss all these concepts in a bit so for now we have just extracted classes created classes for each of the object each of the shape and whenever we want to create uh, we want to display the area what we do is out of this class rectangle class we create object so this is the class definition this class will do nothing unless we create the new object out of that class here we created new rectangle object rec object and we call the display area method and it will display the area of that shape Okay. All right. So let's uh, go back to other concepts. So object oriented programming uh, has these four pillars. So these are the four core concepts in object oriented programming. So let's discuss one by one. First, let's discuss about inheritance. So inheritance is ability to build new classes on top of existing ones. So the basic use of this, um, this pillar is code reuse. So this is the method of reusing our code. And we extend the existing class and put the extra functionality into resulting subclasses which inherits field and method of superclass. So uh, we have one parent class and we have a child class, also known as subclasses and superclasses. So let's uh, better un understand this concept uh, by code example. So here we have the code example for inheritance that I just showed you. So suppose we are writing application to calculate the area of rectangle and each rectangle have area method and circle has also area method and for each shape there is some common functionality like default area or default parameter we put that on the 
parent class so shape is the parent class and rectangle is child class which extend the parent so this is the child of shape so by extending the parent class we inherit their methods so all the method in this class are now inside this class you cannot see it exactly but these are already inside we see that uh, while creating object so this also extends this shape so th this is the way to do in PSP in different language there is a slightly different syntax but the core idea is same all right so now if we create a new object from this class rectangle class and now we can call the display area method on rectangle class so if you see on rectangle class there is no display area method but it exists on parent class shape class so we in inherit this method from shape object and now we can call that here similarly for this so this is the idea behind apps uh, sorry inheritance we reuse the code we put put the common functionality on parent class so if we need any different implementation or we need to create uh, these cal area calculation logic for different shape we just create a new class and extend the parent class and it will inherit all the common code from parent so this is the inheritance in object oriented programming so another concept is abstraction so abstraction is concept of object oriented programming that shows only essential attributes and hides unnecessary information or details from the user so its main purpose is uh, it hides the implementation detail from user it only shows what is necessary so it does that at design level using abstract classes or interface so we'll uh, discuss this in detail by example so let's go to the code so so f section the idea behind f section is suppose you have some classes and there are a lot of thing going on but you want your user to just call one method uh, and that method would handle everything all the uh, implementation detail will be hidden from user and only required uh, method is exposed to client so here we have one example uh, same example with save and calculation of area so the different thing here is uh, we have created the abstract class so abstract class is that class which cannot be used to create a object this is the abstract not a concrete and we created the area method so we this is how we have uh, achieve abstraction so by creating this area method what we are saying is any child class that extends this should have area method all right so this is the common method we can put all other common method in shape uh, this is not the abstraction but here we have just uh, exposed we enforce this method to all subclasses now all subclasses should have this method and uh, the logic uh, for area calculation will be inside this method so what we are doing uh, here is all the logic all the logic for area calculation so there might be uh, different methods different private method or any other method which are responsible for creating calculating this area so those other functionality is hidden from user so what i can just do is i can come and i can call if you want to know area i just uh, call the area and that's it it will give me area so i have hidden all the implementation detail for area from the user who is using my classes so basically when we create any package or any software for client we just uh, let them call one method or some method uh, that just achieves the functionality suppose we are implementing the payment gateway uh, like there are several payment gateway paypal uh, wallet uh, credit card and for all these classes we give the client uh, create order or 
a make payment method so all the logic for different uh, classes we will write that we'll implement that and that is called abstraction we abstract uh, the we hide the all the implementation detail from user and only show the required information to user so what actually the functionality of that class we expose that to user and all other detail we hide that so that is the basic idea behind abstraction and uh, we achieve this using abstract class we have seen example of abstract class uh, there is another way we can uh, achieve that using the interface so interface is uh, just a contract that we'll see in a moment so here we create an inter interface called vehicle vehicle and we uh, say this start engine and interface is a simple simple class where we just write what method should be there on those classes which implements this in interface so vehicles and in vehicle we give the method start engine so anything wants to be vehicle must implement this function so for starting the engine we have to do several steps like uh, connect the wires check the engine and all these uh, low level things all of these logics are hidden from user we just gave them the, this method start engine and they will just be able to start the engine so that is called abstraction and after defining this interface we need to implement that interface so suppose we are creating a car car is kind of vehicle so this implements the vehicle and uh, after implementing that this class should have implementation of that method so right now this method is just abstract no code to perform the starting of engine and for car the start engine process might be slightly different from those of truck those of crane and any other vehicle and the code to start a car engine will be here similarly any other classes uh, will uh, be uh, having same method if that class implements that contract so this is how we achieve the abstraction so abstract classes interface uh, only difference is that you can you can you cannot put any other common code in interface we just put the abstract methods here and uh, you can reuse uh, you cannot put reusable code here so another advantage of interface is you can implement um, several interface where abstract class you can only have one ex ex uh, you have only one class extend to that abstract class you cannot uh, extend to multiple abstract class so uh, we can see that in detail you can read about uh, differences between them hopefully we'll see this in coming lecture and that's idea behind uh, the abstraction all right so so here i have listed the difference between abstract class and interface so you can read about this i can have both abstract and non-abstract methods only have abstract methods meaning here is example of abstract class here in abstract class we have this no abstract method and non-abstract method abstract means that doesn't exist or doesn't have any concrete uh, logic there and here we have uh, it does not support multiple inheritance where it does it can provide implementation of interface it can provide implementation this can have protected and abstract public methods interface can only have public abstract methods and extra class can have final static these kind of uh, access modifier we can see uh, that uh, in encapsulation uh, lecture which we'll uh, discuss next so interface can only have public uh, static final variable so these are some differences 
so another pillar is encapsulation so by uh, this name the meaning encapsulation means to cover it up encapsulate to protect it similarly this this is the process of hiding information details and protecting data and behavior of the object so we do that by using these keywords private protected so encapsulation uses the getter and setter method to alter the private properties and it doesn't allow anyone to alter the inform information in the class so let's see it uh, using example so suppose we have the bank account class and here we have the account number and account balance so no one should be able to alter these important properties so to restrict any other class from misusing these variables these property we make them private so private meaning only this class can change this uh, any other class shouldn't change this so this is how we design software so encapsulation allows us to um, restrict any other class from making changes to this property so whenever we specify private keyword now no one can change it only this method so here we have defined the getter to get this balance so only getter uh, is authorized to get the balance information and uh, setter is allows to set the information so using these getter and setter any other class if they want to change they go through this these method they cannot directly change these so this allows us to check all the security measures in this uh, getter and setter to make their changes so if we do not use encapsulation then it will be very hard for us to track who changed this who changed account balance we will never track we will not have the single point of um, place where it got changes so if we have single point then we can uh, make any changes or any checks any additional logics we can put in one place and it will work for everything so this is the encapsulation next uh, we uh, let's uh, see uh, the difference between abstraction and encapsulation so encapsulation is more about how to achieve functionality like um, um, whereas abstraction is like what a class can do so in abstraction we say class can do start engine or something like that but uh, to implement that start engine method how we do that so uh, this start engine uh, sorry here we have used this start engine method so uh, abstraction says that this uh, class can do start engine this class can start the engine but to implement this start engine method we have to have several other subclasses sorry uh, several other classes that help to create this class so in those classes uh, we make the private uh, class private property we have any other property that user uh, cannot see them so we encapsulate all those uh, and we only expose this so encapsulation help us to implement this so we do that on uh, so encapsulation is more about uh, to achieving the functionality all right so uh, a section process of gaining information process of containing process or method to contain information so this solves as design level uh, while this solves as implementation level so um, while designing the software or while designing the classes we write the interface or fc class then we design that what class can do but encapsulation after designing class while implementing that class we use encapsulation so these are some other uh, difference you can pause the video and just read through them we already discuss, discussed all these and last pillar is polymorphism so it is also one of the very important concepts uh, so polymorphism is the method in an oop 
that performs different things as per the objects class which calls it so it is ability of an object to take on many forms so poly means many morphism many forms so uh, let's better understand by example and then we'll come back to this definition let's go to our editor so here uh, we have polymorphism example so suppose we have an interface called animal an animal make sound all right so this is the contract so every animal should make a sound now we create the tiger class which implements animal and animal tiger make sound this tiger just roars similarly dog class also implement that and dog just do how how like that all right so now after designing all these classes uh, now we have one array of several animals or animals and we want to call the make sound method all right so so all these animal will make sound so now in loop now in loop we make the sound all right so here the polymorphism means that this animal class calls this make sound so we are calling make sound on each of these classes each of these objects so this make sound method is different for this object and different for this object so same object is taking many form like for tiger make sound is different another form and for dog it is different form all right so by using one class we achieve our functionality of making sound whereas each subclass are responsible for their own implementation how they want to function is all up to these classes which implement the interface so this is the idea behind uh, the polymorphism so also we have this example of uh, this vehicle this is also example of uh, polymorphism we achieve this by interface we uh, this vehicle class will have a start engine and this start engine method is different for all vehicle so without interface how we do that so we create the car object we create the truck object and then we call car dot start engine truck dot start engine and this is separate object this is separate object we are calling start engine we call car dot drive we call truck dot drive all right so without interface we do like this so with interface what we have advantage is we are sure to have this method in all the classes that imp implements that interface so we can directly call that and just we got the vehicle we got the truck and we just call the start engine we are sure to have that and so really a use case of this will be like this so suppose we have vehicles array of vehicles we push all these vehicles there and now later on in program we want to start all the cars so we want to start all the car we can use generic programming we just call the start engine and item dot try so this item takes on many forms this start engine is taking many form according to this object so this is the polymorphism all right so you can read about this i will supply all these links so as we write on more code we'll just get used to get used to this uh, we'll have a greater grip on these concepts when we write real application for now just uh, is enough to know what these idea mean and there are two kind of polymorphism dynamic polymorphism that we just see this kind of polymorphism is dynamic polymorphism so it is also known as runtime polymorphism when the program is running 
then it will taking many form it is taking many forms so a start engine for car car is taking different form it is um, calling the different methods and it is also known as dynamic binding runtime binding late method method overriding so method overriding means we are overriding the start engine method in the interface in subclasses we are overriding that and providing our own implementation so this is also known as uh, dynamic polymorphism so similarly we have static polymorphism this is also known as compile time polymorphism generally it is a method overloading so this actually means uh, the method um, is having more than one method with same name but with different arguments so different language allow us to override overload the method so suppose here we have example calculator and in calculator there is two add method with same name add with different uh, three uh, variables for this parameter for one add and two for other and we can call create new object from calculator and then we add so this add is taking different form and this is taking different form whereas these are one one method is taking returning this another is returning that all right so uh, these are the core concept of uh, core pillar that you really need to know in order to uh, write a good program using oop all right so hope you learned uh, something out of this video these are really uh, important concepts so if you do please like and subscribe if you haven't already so keep supporting guys see you on another video bye